In this video, we're going to start coding in Redux. Now, Redux is extremely, extremely simple. What gets complicated about Redux is when you start looking at all the pieces moving in, say, an example that you find on GitHub, some example code somewhere, it actually looks very, very complicated because it's hard to figure out what is actually making the thing work. Um, so we're going to start with really simple examples. You're going to see the beautiful simplicity of Redux, and then we'll build out all the extra pieces to that full working example, and you'll understand how everything works. So I am in the source code repo that I have on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description, and I'm in the for Redux folder, which at this point is a copy paste of the one basic React folder. It's just a simple welcome, and you can kind of change that title to whatever you want. Hello world. So now let's go ahead and just install Redux, which I've already done. So this will just kind of flip by quickly or it will do it all over again. And now we can run npm run dev, which will give us that dev server on localhost 8080. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this client JS and we're gonna scrap it all. We're not gonna use this application at all. I'm actually just going to use the developer tools because we're just going to console log. We're not gonna use React at all because Redux is not actually a part of React or a plugin to React, Redux is its own way of managing application state. You can use it on any application. It just happens to work awesome with React because React is very functional. And we'll see why that is in a little bit. So we just have to import one thing to get rolling and that's create store from Redux. There we go, create store is imported. And to start up a Redux store, you really just need one thing. You need a reducer. So let's just make a, a generic function right now. Function. There we go. So we have a reducer function. We'll fill that in a minute. And now we can create our store. Create store. And then all you need to do is pass it that reducer. And then you give it any kind of initial state. So we can just say the initial state is zero. We'll just make this do an increment for now. So our initial state is not an object. I mean, normally that would be an object that has all the values of your actual application state. But for now, we'll keep it really simple and just make it an integer. So there we go. That's our Redux bootstrapping process. You need a reducer. You need a store. And now we can listen to this store so we can subscribe. And we'll just make a little function here. So when anything changes to the store, we can console log, hey, store changed. And then we can console log the store's current state. There we go. So when anything changes on the store, we're just going to drop a little console log there. And you see if I go ahead and say there, I don't have any logs at all. And then I can actually dispatch events to that store as well. So store dispatch, let's say our type will be increment and payload, I will increment it by one. There you go, it lets it save. You can see that the store changed and there's really no state, nothing happened. The state is undefined. That's because it ran through the reducer and the reducer receives two things. It receives the state and then it also receives an action. And then whatever it returns is the new state for the store. So in this case, we returned undefined, so nothing happened. If we return foo, then the state will always be foo no matter what action happens. There you go, store changed, and the value is foo. So the reducer basically gets to change that state. We make changes to this state based off of what the action tells us to do. So to make this really simple, we can just go if action dot type equals ink. Well, then we're just going to do something state equals state plus one. And that will actually just return state plus one. Otherwise, let's just return state. So now we go store changed and the value is one. Let's do a few more increments here. And you'll see store changed one, two, three, four. Awesome. Now we can add a decrement. Decrement. There we go. And then we could do this exact same thing. If action type equals DEC, let's return state minus one. So there you go. One, two, three, four, three. And that 
is Redux in a nutshell. Now, obviously, you don't want your state to be just this, and we can actually do some more with this action. Let's say we want to increment this payload by one, and let's increment it by two, and then it's increment it by 22, let's increment it by a thousand. Then we can actually do state plus action.payload and state minus action.payload. That way we're actually using that payload. There you go. So it goes from 1 to 3 to 25, 26, negative 974. It, it's completely unopinionated with what you pass in and how you pass it in. With the exception of type. So I can change type here to be command. So I'm calling the command now and action.command. And that's not going to work. So the action does have to have a type value given to it. Now I could change payload to be anything else. This could be value and that's still gonna work or I could call it a number and that's gonna work. So you can completely change the other values in here. You can pass two or three values in, but as a standard, you wanna call it payload. And if you have more than one value to pass into a payload, then you just pass in an object instead of just a single value. Say a payload might have four or five different pieces of information to it, then you still probably just want to pass in a payload and give it an object. That's a standard way of doing things. So there you go. That's Redux. You create a reducer, you create a store, and then whenever you dispatch events, the reducer or multiple reducers act upon that store. So let's go ahead and take this thing a step further and let's combine multiple reducers into one so we can actually break these up into files that make sense.